I got one hand uh, tied up here because I'm going to turn my clock on and try to uh, try to stay to my five minutes and take advantage or uh, be judicious with your time. Um, let me tell you why this issue is, is so vitally important to me. Uh, you know, I was born on a little two-wheel wagon rut mule farm uh, on the cotton and tobacco fields of North Carolina. My grandfather was the superintendent of a little church in that little country community. Uh, he would take me with him to church uh, because his job was to ring the bell uh, in the steeple. This church did not have any indoor plumbing, no electricity. And so you signaled that it was time to come and worship by ringing the bell. And he would let me hold on to this bell rope and it would swing me up into the rafters. And it was like going to the fair for me as a young boy. And it was in the back of that church in a little classroom that I first learned the stories and heard the stories of great Christian patriarchs. I found my own faith and salvation in a bus ministry when I was about 10 years old. And I will never forget that day. I can't tell you what the pastor preached. I can't even tell you what the pastor's name was. But I can tell you who I met that day. And I can tell you that it changed my life in a way that, uh, that is unexplainable. You know, John Adams wrote, our, our nation was founded upon this principle of Christianity. John Adams once wrote, he said, the Constitution of the United States is a document designed to govern a people that live by Judeo-Christian principles. And it's wholly inadequate for any other. That's because he knew that to be self-governing people, you had to be self-disciplined people. And there are no more greater self-disciplined people than Christian people. Let's, uh, let's look and examine a little bit where we've come in humankind with the issue of persecution. Persecution is not new. It's something that every generation has had to deal with. Prior to 1815, persecution of Christians was rampant throughout Europe and Asia. You had the Romans, the Persians, the French, even the Chinese. From 1815 to 1819, I'm sorry, from 1815 to 1989, the biggest example of Christian persecution and other religious groups came at the hands of the great Soviet Empire and Warsaw Pact nations. In the modern era, since 1989, Pope Benedict the 16th says Christians are the most persecuted group in the world. 100,000 Christians are violently killed annually simply because of their faith. The World Evangelical Alliance reports that over 200 million Christians are denied fundamental human rights simply and solely because of their faith. Of this 200 million, the majority of the persecution occurs in Muslim-dominated countries. Proportionately, Christians suffer more prosecution, persecution, more than any other group, faith or non-faith group, in the world. While Christians only make up 33% of the world's population, persecution reports indicate that 80% of persecutions are aimed at Christians. If you look at the top 10 nations that are known for persecuting Christians today, you've got North Korea at the top. They're in Asia. But the other nine are in the Middle East. Nations like Iraq, Eritrea, Afghanistan, Syria, Pakistan, Somalia, Sudan, Iran, and Libya. We see and we sing the headlines of what ISIS, the Islamic State, is doing to Christians. We've got a lot of work to do, folks. I can tell you that there are members of Congress here that are engaged. We've made some progress. Take, for example, 
House Continuing Resolution 75, an expression of the sense of Congress that the atrocities perpetrated by ISIL against religious and ethnic minorities in Iraq and Syria include war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. It passed the House 393 to nothing on March 14th. So this is not a political issue, it is a bipartisan issue. Take a look at H.R. 1150, the International Religious Freedom Act, which would direct the ambassador at large for international religious freedoms to initiate the creation of a special watch list of countries or, non or violent non-state actors that have violated the religious rights of groups. This passed the House on May 16th by voice vote. Also, a bipartisan piece of legislation. But we can't stop here. As I mentioned, it is an every generation issue. We see persecution of Christians right here in our own country. Attempts to deny religious freedoms that are that find their underpinning in the Christian faith. I want to commit to you that as long as I have voice and breath, I will fight to protect and defend the Christian faith. I'm honored that you asked me to speak to you today. I know you're going to hear from a lot of speakers, so I'm going to step down. But let me just thank you for what you're doing. Uh, it's a team effort, and we've all got to stay in this fight together. Thank you very much. Thank you.